Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on polyalphabetic cipher. In polyalphabetic cipher, we are going to exclusively focus on Burnham cipher. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will understand polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Outcome number 2, we will understand the working of Burnham cipher. And outcome number 3, we will know the cryptanalytic difficulty of Burnham cipher. We know we have two techniques under classical encryption. Number 1, the substitution technique and number 2, the transposition technique. We are now in the substitution technique. In substitution technique, we are going to focus on the polyalphabetic ciphers. In the last lecture, we have seen the Wigner cipher, which is also a polyalphabetic cipher. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the Burnham cipher. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the Burnham cipher. We do understand that any cryptographic algorithm should offer the best security possible. Because we don't want our encryption algorithm to be broken easily or we don't want the attacker to know the plain text with the help of ciphertext. And not only this, we also don't want the attacker to know the key as well or to find the key as well, isn't it? So obviously, there is a need of ultimate defense against cryptanalytic attacks. In the last lecture, that is the Wigner cipher, we have seen that the keyword is repeated. Obviously, it is giving room for the attacker to either find the key or the plain text. Because the key is repeated and the length of the key is also having some significance, isn't it? So definitely, the length of the key should be as long as the length of the message. So obviously, we want the length of the keyword and the length of the plain text to be equal so that there will not be a repeating keyword and obviously there will be no statistical relationship to it, isn't it? So talking about the Vernum cipher, at and engineer named Gilbert Vernum has proposed this Vernum cipher in 1918 and Vernum has proposed a system where it works on binary bits rather than letters. In the previous ciphering techniques what we have seen, we have seen that the encryption algorithm works or the system works on the alphabets or characters directly. This Varnum cipher works on binary bits rather than letters or alphabets. So from this point we can understand that this Werner cipher system works on binary bits. So this system can be expressed as follows. Can you see here? The ith binary bit of the plain text is XOR with the ith binary bit of the key and the result of this XOR operation is the ith binary bit of the cipher text. Say for example, if we are taking the first binary bit of the plain text, the first binary bit of the plain text is XOR with the first binary bit of the key. So obviously, we'll be getting the first binary bit of the cipher text. So this is how the Werner cipher works. So we need to understand one thing here that it's a very simple operation. The operation is the bitwise XOR operation, the exclusive OR operation. We will take this expression and demystify all the notions. We know PI is the ith binary of the plain text. KI is the ith binary of the key. CI is obviously the ith binary of the cipher text. And what operation is that? This is the bitwise exclusive OR operation. Let's see the working of Vernum cipher with the help of a diagram. This is the encryption process and this is the decryption process. Just see, the plain text will be provided here or generated here. And this is the cryptographic stream generator that is the key generator. So this key generator will be generating keys. And here is the plain text. The plain text bit is XOR with the key bit. And finally, we will get the cipher text bit. As I already mentioned, this Vernum cipher which was proposed initially works on bits rather than letters. So bitwise XOR operation only is carried out here. So this is what the encryption process is. And the decryption is also very simple because to get the plain text back, see actually plain text is the input here. To get the plain text back, we need to do the same XOR operation again. Say the decryption is going to take the cipher text bit and the key value, the same key value what was offered here. So this cipher text bit XOR with this key bit gives back the plain text bit. So this is what the decryption is. And decryption is a very simple process because if you do XOR operation for CI with KI, that is this, we get the plain text back. This is a simple encryption decryption process. So we are done with the encryption and decryption process of Vernum cipher. Let's now move on to the cryptanalysis of Vernum cipher. 
we know basically the real security is relying with the key or the keyword, right? In Vernum cipher also, the real security is with the key. You know why? Let me show the diagram. See, whatever the key is generated in the encryption side, the same key sequence should be generated in the decryption side. If there is a fixed keyword, it's actually easy to manage. But if we have a random keyword, this randomness is going to produce a random ciphertext which is obviously very difficult to break. But key maintenance becomes a tough job here because the same key should be used for encryption as well as decryption. At the same time, this key should also be shared with the recipient or the destination or the receiver. Only then, the receiver will be getting the ciphertext and using this key, he'll be getting back the plain text using the decryption process. Actually speaking, the initial Vernum cipher proposed by Gilbert Vernum uses repeating keywords. If it is a repeating keyword, it offers lesser security when compared to a non-repeating keyword. And if the keyword is random, we get the ultimate defense against script analytic attacks. Let's see the theoretical points now. We know the construction of key is the very important aspect as far as any cryptographic algorithm is concerned. And in the initial Vernum cipher which was proposed by Gilbert Vernum, the use of a running loop of tape that eventually repeated the key. When the key is repeated, obviously it offers lesser security when compared to the random key. So the system worked with a very long. When the keyword is repeated, obviously it offers lesser security. And this technique can be broken with sufficient ciphertext. You know why? Because the keyword is repeated. This itself is giving some statistical relationship between the plain text and the ciphertext. So this technique can be broken with sufficient ciphertext and the use of known or probable plain text sequences or both. Since the keyword is repeated, this technique can be broken. And what's the solution? We can understand from this that if the keyword is not repeating and if this keyword is a random keyword and the length of this random keyword is equal to the length of the plain text, then it will be the best encryption algorithm, right? That's what the topic of the next lecture, the one time pad, where we are going to use a truly random and the key length is also equal to the length of the plain text. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the polyalphabetic substitution cipher. We also understood the working of Vernum cipher and we come to know about the cryptanalytic difficulty of Vernum cipher. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.